So once again, this is Dr. Anita Sardin, your MC for the session. If you wish to claim your certificate for the same, kindly visit our website, which is www.onlineindustry.in and register for the same. Online dentistry has been the pioneers in providing dental education via both online and offline platforms. It has been over 14 years that online dentistry have been conducting sessions for the clinical practitioners across the globe. Established in the year 2008, so far we have covered over 203 offline courses and have conducted 1,022 online courses with an enormous amount of more than 30,000 followers on our platform. Let me proudly introduce the CEO of online dentistry, Dr. Binutri Abraham, who is one of the finest practitioners in town, an orthodontist by profession, a passionate photographer, and he owns his private practice at Kerala Dental Clinic, Alba. Moving on to the academic head of online dentistry, Professor Dr. Joby Peter. He is currently the HOD of the Department of Pediatric Dentistry at Anu Dental College, who preaches the philosophy to cast them young and watch them grow. Over the years, we have grown dynamically, causing 10 centers in different parts of India. And on popular demand, we are launching or relaunching our three day session on November 24th, 25th, and 26th at Cochin, and we are open for fresh registration via our website. The latest addition to our courses, the one-year comprehensive and advanced master training program on interceptive and myofunctional orthodontics have been successfully initiated with two batches, and this is a multidisciplinary approach with intense training and hands-on session. Our program is now a fellowship program on interceptive and myofunctional orthodontics which is accredited by the Manipal University College, Malaysia, which is the sister concern of Mahi University. Herein, two of the modules will be happening in Malaysia, along with the graduation ceremony and a certificate distribution as well. So we are a bachelor, competing a record of breaking registration 15 and awaiting registrations for the 2024 batch via our website. So you guys can always feel free to reach to us on our WhatsApp number, or visit our website, which is www.onlineindustry.in, or else you can mail us on onlineindustry.in at gmail.com. Online industry have been conducting sessions all over India for the past 14 years. So during the lockdown, we started conducting online sessions to benefit the practitioners, which have been received great appreciation from the dental fraternity. And in the year 2023, we are relaunching the same under the title Online Industry at 9 p.m. So without further ado, let me move on to introducing the speaker for the day, Dr. Rakavendra M. Shetty. He's a complete academician, a clinician who graduated from A.B. Shetty Dental College and did his master's in pediatric and preventive dentistry from Bayman Dental College, Bangalore. He was conferred with his PhD and he was awarded a gold medal for his highest score in master's by Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Science. He was also awarded the Young Pediatric Researcher by the ISPPD 2010. He's presently working as a faculty at Ajman University, UAE, and also he's an adjunct faculty at Sharad Pawar Dental College and Hospital. Sir, online dentistry, proudly welcome you to the session tonight. The session is over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Anita. Thank you, sir. All the best. Yeah. So, I'm ready to go to share this screen, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You have made me the co-host, right? Yes, sir. Yes. You are not able to stray, uh, scare, uh, share the screen, sir? Yes. Screen. Okay. Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Can you switch on to the... Slideshow? Slideshow, oh, sir. Yes. Yes, right. sir. Perfect. It's perfect. perfect. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are we ready to start or should I wait for a few minutes, one or two? Sir, we are good to go, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, a very good evening to one and all. 
so as you all know like uh, uh, we have been having this online sessions and online dentistry has invited to deliver a lecture so i thought one of the uh, easiest topic which would be helpful for all so can we replace pulpectomy with pulpotomy or can pulpotomy we re can replace the pulpectomy techniques so i work as told in ajman university which is in ajman where i reside in dubai which is around 20 to 25 minutes from dubai where we cross sharja and i work uh, as a faculty for the postgraduate students who are doing msc pediatric dentistry and today's topic can pulpotomy replace pulpectomy in primary teeth today i'll be only talking about the primary teeth so in future there may be that uh, topic called where can pulpotomy replace pul uh, root canal treatment in permanent teeth we never know so can pulpotomy replace pulpectomy in primary teeth what do you feel so before i start my session i would like to have a poll on that let us see okay is it uh, visible Dr. Anita? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible, sir. Yes, so, sir. Are, are the participants able to access this? Is it yeah. so, sir? Oh, we can see the slide. Yes, sir. Yeah, but I'm not seeing any response as such. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. We are getting it. Yes, sir. We are getting responses. Okay. 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 So I think we have a stable result now. Oh, I yeah. Can see. yeah, yeah. Thank you. So we'll end the poll and okay. So it says that 43% have said yes and 35% maybe. 16% no and 5% don't know. So the maximum is in between yes and maybe. Okay. That's fine. So let us see how it goes. So overall, let me uh, come to the brief. What all pulpal treatment modalities are there? So you have one that is conservative treatment that is aimed at maintaining the pulp vitality, which includes, as you all know, protective base application, indirect pulp capping, direct pulp capping and pulpotomy. The caries is in the enamel or dentine, then you start with, you know, normal restoration. And if it goes deeper with the pulpal vitality, and then either it could be a indirect pulp capping or a direct pulp capping. If it is approaching the pulp, then you go for pulpotomy. And if not, if it goes to the radical, it becomes pulpectomy and root filling. So what is pulpotomy? As you all know, it is a complete removal of the coronal portion of the dental pulp followed by placement of a suitable dressing or medicament that will promote healing and preserve the vitality of the tooth. Or else, it is just an amputation of the vital pulp from the coronal chamber, followed by placement of a medicament over the radical pulp stumps to stimulate either repair, either fixation or mummification of the remaining vital radicular pulp. So what are the indications of pulpotomy? Let me just brief it up. One, if a curiously exposed primary teeth, when their retention is more advantageous than extraction. Number two, vital tooth with healthy periodontium. Pain, if persists not spontaneous or not persists after the removal of stimulus. Sometimes the patient comes to you, tells that while eating sweets or while taking cold, there is pain and then later it subsides. So that is case of a reversible pulpitis. So by in that case, we can go for pulpotomy and which is restorable. The tooth has to be restorable in the sense where we can uh, build it up or else place a stainless steel crown and the tooth which at least has two-third root length. 
and hemorrhage from the amputation site is pale red and easy to control the moment how do you the moment you open up the uh, axis and remove the coronal pulp take a cotton pellet with saline and then dip it on that and if the hemorrhage is arrested it is a case of pulpotomy if there is any hyperemia so what happens there will be oozing of blood then it is a case for pulpectomy then a large caries lesion but the radicular pulp free from pathosis there should not be any abscess or fistula, no interradicular bone loss, no interradicular radiolucency. These are the indications of the pulpotomy by AAPD and other things, uh, what has been cited in the literature. Then contraindication, if there is a persistent toothache and when you do the percussion, either finger or a, a instrument percussion, if there is any tenderness, mobility, root resorption more than one third, large caries lesion with non-restorable crown, highly viscous sluggish hemorrhage from canal orifice which is uncontrollable hemorrhage from the amputated site which is uncontrollable this all becomes the contraindication of pulpotomy so how do you classify pulpotomy so pulpotomy is classified broadly into vital pulpotomy and non-vital pulpotomy for well, vital pulpotomy we have devitalization according to the extent what you're using and preservation and regeneration. Whereas non-vital pulpotomy has where you use beechwood chrysol or fomocrisol, it is also called as multiple visit non-vital pulpotomy. So in vital pulpotomy, you have devitalization. What all comes in devitalization? Devitalization technique can be a single sitting or a two sitting. In a single sitting, you may use fomocrisol electrosurgery or laser where you are going to devitalize the tissue and uh, cause the mummification or cauterization over there. Or you can have a two sitting, you can use the Geysi triphosphate, paraform devitalizing paste or Islix formaldehyde. Whereas the second uh, uh, technique is preservation. So you preserve the vitality, uh, however you preserve the vitality in all the place where you preserve the tissue over there by using glutaraldehyde ferric sulfate and MTA. And there could be a regeneration where you can use bone morphogenic protein. So non-vital pulpotomy, we use beechwood chrysol or formacrisol. Ideally, a non-vital tooth should be treated by pulpectomy or root canal filling. But sometimes what happens, the patient is very uncooperative, very young child, and sometimes you're not able to negotiate all the canals and also you know, you want to delay the extraction because the perm permanent molar have not been erupted. So you may have to give a distal shoe, which is not very feasible in children. So you need to prolong the uh, stay of the tooth in the oral cavity. You may go for a non-vital pulpotomy. So what basically you do in pulpotomy? You 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 do the access opening as same as of the permanent tooth. Uh, when you know, and then with a the round bar, once you enter into the a pulp chamber, you deroof it, and basically, deroofing uh, always better if you use a safe ended burr. Because what happens in the safe ended burr, it cuts only on the side. So, if you use this, you are not going to hamper any, you are not going to uh, perform any perforations over there. It will cut only and it will deroof the pulp chamber without causing any perforation. So, better use a safe ended burr. Once you open up the pulp chamber and deroof it, you remove the coronal pulp completely and you place cotton which is tipped with saline and then you put it in the chamber and keep it for one or two minutes the moment you remove if the bleeding has stopped then it means it is a case for pulpotomy if there is complete hemorrhage then you have to go next for the pulpectomy so if the bleeding is arrested then it depends on what type of pulpotomy either you are doing a ferric sulfate pulpotomy you'll apply ferric sulfate if you are going to use uh, uh, biodentine or MTA, you will place those particular uh, material such that the vitality of the radicular pulp is maintained. So then you close it with zinc oxide eugenol and then maybe a GIC and later always better to go cover it with the stainless steel crown. Why Why not GIC? Why you need, uh, why, uh, you need to use zinc oxide eugenol? Because in case if there is any reinfection, if you have to enter the canals from pulpotomy to pulpectomy, it's always better to have a dressing of zinc oxide eugenol or any temporary dressing material where you can easily remove and enter into the canal if required. 
So whereas coming to the pulpectomy, it is defined as a complete removal of necrotic pulp from the root canals of the primary teeth and filling it with the resorbable material. As you know that as a permanent tooth erupts, the root has to be resorbed at the same rate as that of the material and the root has to resorb at the same time. So you use a resorbable material like zinc oxide eugenol or metapex or vitapex, which is calcium hydroxide or uh, along with the idofoam. So it is also known as root canal procedure for pulp tissue that is irreversibly inflamed or necrotic due to caries or trauma. So what we do, it's same that you enter the pulp chamber, you remove the caries, you do the access cavity opening, de-roof the chamber. And But the difference here is in pulpotomy, you just remove the coronal pulp, but in pulpectomy, you need to remove the radicular pulp also. So you take the bar approach and go into the canal, extirpate the pulp and you do shape. The difference between root canal, there it is a proper biomechanical preparation. In pulpectomy, in a primary tooth, you want to enlarge the canals so that you can uh, easily push the materials, whatever you are using. Could be zinc oxide eugenol with conventional technique or it could be with a syringe like metapex or vitapex that is calcium hydroxide with idofoam or leather mix, whichever uh, material you're using, you need to enlarge the canal. So you use the instrumentation, either it could be hand driven or it could be the rotary instrument nowadays for the better efficiency and time uh, you'll also save time. And then you restore the radicular pulp, uh, radicular uh, root uh, with the obturating material, which are resorbable. So depending on the amount of the instrument penetration, it could be partial pulpectomy or also it can be complete pulpectomy. So partial is the removal of pulp and debris and subsequent filling of the canal short of the apex, whereas complete removal of the pulp and debris and subsequent filling of the canal till the apex is known as complete pulpectomy. So also you have uh, the what are the indications of partial pulpectomy. It is uh, performed on primary teeth when coronal pulp tissue and tissue entering the canals are vital but show signs of hyperemia and no signs of necrosis pulp. They say that the partial pulpectomy, if there is necrosis, you are not going for a partial pulpectomy. You have to go for a complete pulpectomy. So in this, you remove the uh, uh, part of the pulp filaments from the root canals around 30 to 50 percent with fine bar approach and edge files and you irrigate with H2O2 that is hydrogen peroxide followed by sodium hypochlorite. After hemorrhage is controlled, zinc oxide is coated and then you fill it as conventionally as you do. So what is the basic difference between the pulpotomy and pulpectomy? So pulpectomy, pulpotomy is done in a vital tooth whereas pulpectomy is done in a non-vital tooth. And pulpotomy in a healthy periodontium and pulpectomy could have an furcation or coronal and radicular involvement or if there is any abscess, irreversible pulpitis or absence of any underlying cyst, you go for pulpectomy. Whereas if there is any uh, uh, fistula or pain involvement of pulp floor, you can't do a pulpotomy that becomes a contraindication for the Pulpotomy, it becomes an indication for pulpectomy. So now, so what are the drawbacks of the uh, various pulpectomy? I feel always it is time consuming. It needs proper isolation of the rubber dam, needs patient cooperation. Like, you know, if the Frankel rating should be either three or four, cooperative or highly cooperative, then only like otherwise it becomes, you can't sterilize the canal very well and can't do a very good obturation. And sometimes it may need a multiple visits also. So now, for example, you have a case with you. So this is a case aged five years and uh, the pain for awake in relation to, sorry, it's 8-5, okay, and it aggravates at night. So, and if you see the radiograph, there is a radio lucency and also there was a slight abscess also in this case. And then you can see that radio lucency reaching the pulp with interradicular radio lucency. And if there is, and also caries, you can see approaching the pulp. So, what would you do in this case? We have checked what is pulpotomy, pulpectomy and everything. So, so, 
So what would be your proposed treatment plan for this tooth age five? Radiolucency, slight mobility, Okay. Uh, thank you. So maximum have opted for pulpectomy and followed by pulpotomy and few for extraction and few extraction by distal shoe space maintenance and few uh, four percent of LSDR. So yeah, fine. thank you. The uh, as you see that. Here, this first permanent molar is not yet erupted because the age is five. If at all, if you extract this teeth, then you have to go for a distal shoe space maintainer. Otherwise, there will be a loss of space and the premolar may not have a space to erupt properly into the oral cavity. Similarly, this is another case. Same five years of age with the age four periapical infection with abscess and mobility and also I could see a, a, a draining abscess and patient is highly uncooperative. So what would be your treatment plan in this case? All, even, you can also see, you know, slight root resorption also. Yeah, we have a stable result now. Let me share the results. So it says that it is around 45% preferred extraction, whereas 27 people preferred pulpectomy and 11% preferred mortal pulpotomy and 15% preferred LSTR. Thank you. So I've been hearing, and if you see this article in the pediatric dentistry, the clinical practice guidelines of the recommendation, which was published in 2020, they have divided the tooth according to the pulp diagnosis. If it is vital, it could be normal or reversible pulpitis. Either you can do an indirect pulp capping or a direct pulp capping or pulpotomy, followed by a stainless steel crown. If it is non-vital, it could be irreversible pulpitis or it could be necrotic. So, if the tooth is restorable and if there is root resorption or uh, the, uh, if there is no root resorption, then they go for pulpectomy. If there is a root resorption or uh, internal or external root resorption, either you go for an extraction or you go for an LSTR. What is LSTR? It is lesion sterilization tissue repair with alternate 3M mix. And the evidence are supported by moderate to high quality evidence that LSTR can be performed and alternate 3M mix with supported by the low or very low quality evidence. Whereas you can see that in pink, calcium hydroxide can't be used in pulpotomy, which, has, which is where it may lead to an internal resorption. So what is this LSTR? It is nothing but it's also known as non-instrument endodontic treatment that is NIET. In 1990s, it was proposed by Hoshino et al. It is an alternative biological approach that sought to facilitate the disinfection of dentinal caries lesions, pulp and periapical lesions in primary teeth. LSTR consists of a 
non mechanical instrumentation of the root canals and the placement of a paste made of mixture of antibiotics at the entrance of the root canals so it is one of one of the options to potentially replace pulpectomy is lstr because it is simpler quicker to perform does not necessitate multiple visits to be completed and even for the teeth with periapical lesions we can use lstr and prolong the uh, tooth to be there in the oral cavity and then without any space maintainer to be given so if you go to the evidence and check whether the use of lstr is better than the conventional endodontic treatment that is pulpectomy in a primary teeth so uh, which has been published in 2020 it says that there is no difference between the lstr and pulpectomy approaches could be confirmed by the meta analysis that means the quality of evidence according to the grade scheme were from moderate to very low so it can't say that which is superior whether lstr or pulpectomy it means to say that they are almost equal so what is LSTR? What are the various types of antibiotic or other materials which have been used? It could be a triple antibiotic. To start with, they use the triple antibiotic paste, which is also called as 3-mix. So it has got three antibiotics, that is metronidazole, ciprofloxacin, and minocycline. As they use this, we will... Then we have three mix MP, that is, you wanted a paste system. So what they add, they added the vehicle macrogol and propylene glycol, which is called as MP paste, to make it in a paste so that it is easier to carry into the orifice. Then we have three mix MP alternate because this minocycline started staining the tooth. It caused discoloration and causes cause staining of the teeth. So they uh, replace minocycline with clindamycin so you have 3m mix mp alternate that is metronidazole that is 33 percent almost one is to one is to one ratio with clindamycin slightly higher of one percent that is for 34 percent and ciprofloxacin that is 33 percent with macrogol and propylene glycol mp paste so then they have also tried ctz that is chlor chloramphenicol tetracycline zinc oxide and eugenol paste and gam which I had introduced in way back in 2015 that is gentamicin, amoxicillin and metronidazole mixture that is called as GAM paste and also a newer drug is available which was old drug but which has come back to the market which is called as Pulpotec. We will see the different types of success with various types of materials and then you can conclude yourself which would be the best material to be used. So if you see the triple antibiotic paste literature where they use the three antibiotics actually it is triple antibiotic with the vehicle that was taken one is to one is to one ratio that is your <clears throat> ciprof uh, uh, metronidazole ciprofloxacin and minocycline and they compared it with the normal obturation that is pulpectomy which uh, when the comparison was done they concluded that 3m mix and vitapex can be used as a root canal treatment against agent in the pulpally involved primary teeth. So both could be and it is validated uh, results which have been here. So triple antibiotic paste and Vitapex showed the similar result. Similarly, this they concluded that this is a simple and short procedure of 3M mix may be superior to other materials used for root canal treatment in pulpally involved primary teeth. The simple procedure where you do a rubber dam isolation, do the excess cavity, remove the coronal pulp, and then you place the triple antibiotic paste and then seal it with GIC and place a stainless steel crown. If at all you place a stainless steel crown, the success rate is higher and the longevity of the tooth also is higher. Same way, recently, that is in 2023, last month only this uh, article was published where they have seen LSTR with chloramphenicol, tetracycline, zinc oxide eugenol paste versus conventional pulpectomy. A 36 months, that is three years randomized clinical trial. And after 36 months of evaluation, 
the effect that they concluded that the effectiveness of LSTR technique with CTZ paste and pulpectomy was similar for the treatment of primary molars with pulp necrosis. If the pulp is necros, instead of doing all this pulpectomy, just open up the chamber, remove the coronal pulp, place the CTS paste, and then it gives the same result as that what you have done with the pulpectomy. GAM. What GAM is nothing but the mixture what we what I was going through the literature and I thought that gentamicin, amoxicillin and metronidazole are easily available in India and they, they have a good antimicrobial property. So I <clears throat> got the powder, we hired the powder from directly from the pharmaceutical company and then mix 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio with the saline to form a homogeneous paste and we tried. First, we wanted to see an in vitro study. So we conducted an in vitro study with a GAMP paste on we are along uh, and compared with uh, other medicines, uh, phytomedicines like, you know, cumin and uh, 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 chlorhexidine. And we saw that and especially this was checked against Enterococcus uh, faecalis. This is the most resistant organism. Any uh, irrigation solution or any uh, um, LSTR technique, if at all, if it is, it can be antibiotic, it, if it can kill the anti E. faecalis, then it would be a better drug. So when we saw this, we saw that the GAM antibiotic demonstrated strongest antibacterial activity producing the largest zone of inhibition compared with other medicament. So it gave us a green signal to carry out some other in vivo studies. So it, among all the materials what we used, GAM antibiotic showed an, uh, you know, highest antibacterial, uh, antibacterial uh, activity. So we plan to do an in vivo study. So what we did is like we took around 30, 60 patients, age 4 to 8 years. And group one group consisted of 30 patients with periapical and furcation radiolucency. And other group, which all required a pulpal treatment, but this had, the first group had periapical furcation and furcation radiolucency. The group 2, that is group N, had, it had pulpitis, but without any periapical and furcation radiolucency. So the first group was, uh, again divided into non-instrumentation technique and instrumentation technique. In non-instrumentation technique, what we did is we did the access opening, removed the coronal pulp, that's it, and we just placed the medicament, that is GAM. In, in, uh, in instrumentation technique, what we did is because it had a periapical and furcation radiolucency, we extirpated the pulp, but we didn't fill the canal with anything. We extirpated the pulp and placed the GAM paste. Whereas in a uh, group N, without any periapical and furcation radiolucency, in non-instrumentation technique, we similarly followed the technique of pulpotomy. Whereas in instrumentation technique, uh, uh, sorry, in non-instrumentation technique, we just placed uh, the, the medicament and the orifice. And in instrumentation technique, we removed the complete coronal pulp and then placed the medicament. So when we got the results, this is how we went for it. Isolation with rubber dam and then access of the pulp chamber and then placement of the GAM paste on the root, uh, on the canal orifices of the pulp chamber, then restored with the GIC and it was <coughs> cemented with the stainless steel crown with the looting GIC cement. So then we did a follow-up for three months, six months, nine months and 12 months, both clinical as well as radiographical, checking in the clinical for if there is any abscess, if there is any tender bone percussion, if there is any pain or swelling. For radiographically, we saw the continuity of the laminar dura, whether the radiolucency has decreased or increased, and if there is any internal resorption. So when all this was checked with the uh, one-year follow-up, we found that there was no significant difference between the instrumentation and non-instrumentation. That means whether you do the instrumentation or not. So the GAM showed the success up to 80%. So 
that means that you need not do a pulpectomy. You can just place this medicament, then it will heal. And there were only one or two cases which had internal resorption or one or two cases with the failure which had got. So we have got statistically significant positive result in the negative one. So you can see the case, this is the preoperative which came to us. You had I had asked you what is line of your treatment. See the patient came here, there was an interradicular radiolucency. You could see the root uh, uh, resorption also. So usually we feel like this is not a case for uh, pulpotomy to never. Can be a case for a pulpectomy, maybe a partial pulpectomy or it could be for the extraction. But what we, do he what we did here was LSTR. We just, uh, ja, Dr. Janita, you can see the all the radiographs, right? Is the bar covering the radiographs? So then what you do is you place, you can see over here, it is a non-instrumentation technique what we follow. Uh, we, we just opened up, removed the caries and pulp was exposed. We didn't bother to remove the coronal pulp also. We just placed a medicament GAM and then put a stainless steel crown. And you can see that six months follow, you can see the teeth is still intact. The resorption, root resorption has not increased. You can see slight bone deposition. And if you see a 12 month, the more of a bone deposition has taken place. Clinically, there was no signs and symptoms, no abscess, no swelling, no pain. And then instead of extraction and followed by a space maintainer where it would have increased the plaque load or else by, instead of uh, doing a pulpectomy, which would you know require more of a time with simple LSTR, we could achieve this result. Similarly, all the uh, uh, out of 60 cases, we got a success of 57 cases in all the groups. So, which is quite a good result. So, that is all about GAM paste. Then, we also now have mixed this GAM paste with chitosin because it will increase the uh, substantivity and it stays for a longer time. And also, we want to check whether it can be used as a root canal irrigant. But one of the drawbacks with LSTR with the antibiotic paste, if you go to the literature, some claim that it may lead to the antibiotic resistant. So sometimes what happens, some of the articles, uh, they, they don't accept or they don't agree with this treatment. So, but unless and until you have a, a good success rate and the evidence still shows that LSTR is as good as your conventional pulpectomy. So we saw that this can be a potential intracanal. The, the in vivo research is in progress. It has uh, this GAM with chitosin. GAM C has proven to possess a good substantivity, making this material a good choice for intracanal medicament. So we need, and in, also we are comparing plain GAM with. Game, uh, GAM chitosin and we may come in a year or two with a, uh, with a result like which would be better or whether there is any difference between these two or not. After from going from moving on from the GAM paste, there's one beautiful drug which you may be using or you may be having that is called as Pulpotech. It has been provided from Switzerland that is called as Pulpotech by PD Swiss company it is a radio opaque non resorbable paste used for permanent permanent treatment of pulpitis not permanent tooth permanent treatment of pulpitis by pulpotomy on vital teeth both permanent and deciduous that is what the they claim over this and so we wanted to rule out whether whatever the claim is right or not basically it comes in a powder and a liquid form you have two bottles, you have a powder and liquid where you need to mix both to make a fresh cement. So the powder consists of polyoxymethylene, idoform and expand, that is nothing but a vehicle and liquid contains of dexamethasone acetate uh, and formaldehyde, phenol and glucosyol. So what is the mode of action? It basically forms a scar formation at the site of heel wounding and also they say that it 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 causes the chamber canal interface, 
while maintaining the structure of the underlying pulp. They claim that it can be used even for vital pulpotomy. We are just trying on a non-vital pulpotomy or non-vital therapy only. We, uh, the vital, I wanted to do some more in vitro test. Then only we will be using it on vital. I have not started using it in a vital pulpotomy. My postgraduate students are not using it, but we are widely using it for the non-vital pulp therapy. So basically what they say is in adults also it can use for pulpitis on the pile. That is what the company claims. Treatment of molars suffering calcified root canal and in primary it can be used for primary vital molars which I don't have much of evidence but there are few papers which have supported this. The treatment of pulpitis on immature permanent vital molars and enabling a complete radicular development of the tooth in young permanent tooth and treatment of the infected primary molars, even in the presence of abscess. We have a lot of cases which came to us with an abscess. We drained the abscess and then opened up the chamber and then did an uh, pulpotomy and placed pulpotech and uh, stainless steel crown. We saw complete resolution in the abscess and even three months, nine months, two year follow up, the, the, the teeth was still over there. Which And also we have seen some bone regeneration also. As you all, uh, I'll be showing some of the cases. There are few articles which are there, but we don't have a long, other more than one year follow up cases. I have one or two cases with two year follow up, but I need more number of cases to come with the proper evidence. But whatever, whenever I have a very uncooperative patient and then abscess where you are not able to put rubber and do, I usually open up the pulp chamber, put the pulpotech next visit put the pulpotech and GIC and next visit I put a crown if it is very uncooperative I go for a hall technique put a separator and send and then next visit I just put a crown over there cement the crown and I see a beautiful result there are a few pe uh, papers and this pulpotech is a very old even in 1990 they had done a study and later this product was not available now with refined uh, some of the um, uh, medicaments which have been added and it is back into the market which is giving a good result. So this was a case which I showed you a patient of 5 years with uh, the interradicular radiolucency in 8.5 and now if I have to extract this I need to give a distal shoe space maintainer. Again the uh, patient was very uncooperative and you know my oral hygiene was poor parents also were not so aware where they used to maintain the oral hygiene then I thought I would avoid extraction and give a distal shoe where the maintenance is poor. So what we did is we just placed a pulpotech and put a crown my postgraduate put a crown and I identified that this crown is not properly fit and then I made her to redo the crown and you can see that it was refitted with the pulpotech and then you see there is a bone healing. One year follow-up when you see, you can see that it's a complete bone healing over there. So if you see in the first, you, uh, you feel that either you have to go for a pulpectomy or you need to extract this too. But when you place the pulpotech or any LSTR, in this case, I have placed the pulpotech and I have seen that you can see over there, slowly uh, physiological root resorption has slightly started, but I don't have any radiolucency over there. I can see the bone formation over there. And I'm happy here because the six has erupted on its own now. In case if there is any failure also, I'm not worried. I can give a lingual arch or some other space maintainer. But fortunately, it is still good going on well. And maybe I'll see after two year and three year follow-up, if there is a normal exfoliation, then I'll have a good case to have a longer follow-up. So, so with this Pulpotech, I could save the tooth and with minimum time, I could, uh, you know, perform the treatment. Similarly, a patient came here on uh, the February of 2022, he had been treated somewhere for a pulp therapy and I could see the uh, very large radiolucency over here. So now patient is highly, highly uncooperative and also a negative experience in the previous somewhere. And then she's not ready to sit on the dental chair at all. But the parents are telling she's not able to sleep and there is a periapical abscess over there. So we thought like we, the, the ideally we would think we could do extraction, but I wanted to check because patient was very uncooperative. Let me check what I told my postgraduate student to remove the, uh, the older restorations and put a pulpotech over there. 
and unfortunately with the crowns they she was recalled for the crown and the treatment patient didn't turn up because the pain has subsided and they came <clears throat> that was you can see after almost uh, one year that is 11 3 23 when we took a radiograph we just requested them to come over and then they somehow we could get a follow-up and only thing we could take a radiograph they are not feeling for any other thing the child is very very young and then uh, you know she's very uncooperative but the plus point is that you can see that still even after one year from the hopeless prognosis we can see that we have tried to save the tooth over there it is still over there if at all if we could crown it and then treat the other tooth it would be a great uh, follow-up case so these are few of the cases the worst cases where you know still we have got a success and this is one of the case again where it came both the teeth what we did was both are non-vital they had to go for a non-vital pulp therapy we did just pulpotomy and placed pulpotech and then you can see almost two year follow-up there is no increase in the radiolucency or anything but in this case we didn't see more of a bone regeneration as such but it is not uh, the uh, the still you can see that when the patient had come to me in february the first molar was not erupted so again if i had extracted the this teeth i had to plan for a distal shoe space maintainer again it would have increased the uh, plaque um, load and then a proper follow-up if i had not got the patient may not maintain his oral hygiene so we did this pulpotech pulpotomy for both the teeth and you can see that within one year the six has erupted nicely over here and by two years still that tooth is over there acting as a natural space maintainer so i hope this stays for another four or five years till the uh, physiological root resorption and the proper eruption we are following it up hope so in another two three years we see that the premolars start erupting and then resorbs the a root and we have a normal eruption of the premolar. So the advantages of LSTR is easy to perform. It requires less chair time and children's acceptance of this treatment is good. Even an uncooperative patient, sometimes you just remove it and then place pulpotech. And you can see in one or two cases, in spite of not giving a stainless steel crown, also periapically we had a success. So, if we place a stainless steel crown, I am sure that LSTR will work for at least 95% of your cases. And sometimes in sickle cell disease, instead of extraction, we have to save the tooth. Pulpotomy or pulpectomy is preferred in those cases because we have a lot of cases over here with sickle cell disease. What we do is we use this LSTR technique. We don't think about extraction or we don't think about conventional pulpectomy. So these are the advantages. So now, what do you feel? Can we replace, can this pulpotomy replace pulpectomy in primary teeth? However, we need a longer follow-up. Maybe we have maximum now two to three years follow-up. We may have to have an evidence of five, six to eight years follow-up, which shows without any, definitely I can feel that in coming year, maybe a next generation will not be doing pulpectomy. That, that's what I feel. So what do you feel after going through these cases, few of the worst cases which I have shared with you. So what do you feel? So can this, because I am also not sure about it. So I want your perception and interpretation. What do you feel? With these techniques, can we replace pulpectomy with pulpotomy? A short time. Because it's going to take a shorter time to a great end. Okay, that's great. So maximum people believe yes, that is 58% followed by maybe yes, we need to have a good evidence base to, you know, uh, completely adapt this. Maybe another 10 years, if you have a too many randomized clinical trials, we are going on, even we are doing some randomized clinical trials over here in the department. And if you have a good evidence with a follow-up, definitely it 
could be so even i feel it could be maybe and no yeah in certain cases if you feel like once we come out with the evidence uh, so so we can come uh, we can come to a proper conclusion as of now i feel it can replace it can replace pulpectomy and more than that you save the time and patient acceptance is better that is more important and then you can you know ins uh, have a better result okay so thank you very much i hope the things were clear if you have any doubts you can ask me and you can try out uh with this type of results even if you are trying for a pulpectomy if uh, the people who told no if you are going for a pulpectomy conventional in one visit you can place some of the lstr medicaments you can buy three antibiotics mix among yourself and then put it in the canal you will have a sterilization and next visit when he comes he doesn't have any pain do the conventional the, the abscess has healed and then you can do the conventional pulpectomy so thank you thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share whatever little knowledge i had thank you sir for that power pack session sir we have some questions from a chat box it's from dr subraj is pulp tech available in india sir the question um, is like uh, is pulp tech yeah. available in india yeah i'm not sure very sorry i'm not sure i'll check it but it is easily available in ua in dubai it is easily available but here it costs uh, around 280 dirhams that comes to around 6000 rupees but you can use it on minimum i think uh, more than 60 uh, pulp more than 60 tooth so another question was uh, does gem paste also contain radio opacifier yeah when 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 it doesn't contains anything but it it shows opacity we have yeah if you, it shows opacity when you mix it and then it has opacity in that we didn't had any uh, opacifier in that but still we could see the radio opacity when we took a radiograph yeah yes sir. so next question is from sir dr pravina uh, is it necessary to remove the total coronal pulp for no. pulp uh, no not necessary not necessary if a patient is uh, cooperative if you are able to open up fully well and good if not if at all at least little bit of access but little bit of access should be there where the material can seep into the pulpal uh, tissue because Thank one you. or two radiographs what i have shown you there we have just opened up place it, place it on the top the non instrumentation technique so if at all you can open up it would be good The next question is from Dr. Patni, sir. LSTR in immature permanent upper molar teeth. If yes, could you explain the result of the treatment, sir? No, if you go to the literature, yes, LSTR has been given a good result even in the young permanent tooth. But nowadays, you have MTA and biodentin. They are giving wonderful results even with the periapical abscess, with irreversible pulpitis also. You just remove the coronal, do the pulpotomy. Coronal pulpotomy with biodentin or MTA. So biodentin and MTA have given equal results in case of irreversible pulpitis in a permanent tooth. So you can use this. No need to do. In future, there won't be something called as root canal treatment. You need not do. When these materials are doing all the properties and keeping them healthy, you can go for pulpotomy even in primary tooth. Uh, sorry, permanent tooth. Permanent tooth. So also, uh, so another query is that whether any substitute is pra substitute is present for the same for Indians. Uh, for, for no LSTR, you can use uh, like you know gentamicin, amoxicillin, minocycline, three tablets or a capsule. You take it, put the powder, mix with the saline, and you can use it. You can use any combination of antibiotic, and you can put it on the uh, in the pulp chamber. can make it freshly you can prepare you can use a mortar and pestle if it is a tablet to crush it and then mix all the three and you can use it whereas uh, i'm not sure of pd pulpotech whether it is available in india or not i'm not sure about it 
So the last question for the night, sir, from Dr. Rahul. If a case with abscess comes, should we do LSTR on the same day or open the access and do the treatment on the next appointment, sir? No, the moment the patient comes to you, do the access cavity, remove the, if possible, if you have to remove the coronal pulp and place or whatever, place the LSTR or a pulpotech there and give a, a, a zinc oxide is not temporary dressing and top GIC and drain the abscess through the, uh, uh, you drain the abscess through sharp instrument and then next visit, give a stainless steel crown. Once the abscess has healed, you give a stainless steel crown. Thank you, so the same Thank you, yeah. sir. We're coming to the end of the session. So that was a wonderful session, sir. So stay tuned till the next second Wednesday for another punching session from online dentistry. Good night, all. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.